What's up everybody? Thanks for checking out my video. I've got a cool one in store for you. Um, first I want to say thanks to everybody who has already subscribed to my channel. It's awesome. It seems like it's going to be growing fairly quickly. So that's always good. Um, more and more people can learn some stuff and step up their airbrush work or their art in general. Uh, I learned a lot from YouTube back in the day when I was first starting out. Some of the artists on there helped me out big time, so I'm just kind of doing the same thing. Sharing what I've learned along the way from them and other people and just kind of on my own from experimenting. Um, so, the video today, it's going to be another t-shirt painting and it's going to be a dog portrait. Um, just from a reference photo from Google. This is my reference photo. Thought it would be cool. It's got a pretty good angle on it. And I'm going to go over how to transfer the image, the stencil to the shirt. So you can see me do that. Um, I've already got the stencil made, but I'll kind of just go back and explain how I did that, show you what tool I used and all that good stuff. So once again, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all my new videos I post. I'm not getting to post as often as I would like, but every two weeks or so, I'm gonna be posting a new video for you. I've been super busy with other stuff. Um, I tattoo full time and I have other businesses that I focus on also. But I will try to post every couple of weeks and share something cool. If y'all have something you would want me to paint to kind of show you my way of doing it, I can do that. Just let me know, comment below, and let's get into it. All right. So I'm back here in my airbrush studio. I've got my shirt stretched out on the shirt board already. If you are gonna be doing t-shirts regularly and you don't have any of these, I highly recommend you getting some of those. I think I shared the link in the comment section on my other video, so I'll do that again so you can find those. The set comes with several different sizes, small through 2X or 3X or something works awesome and as far as the stencil goes like I said here's my reference photo just pulled that off Google and I photoshopped it just a little bit just to get the lights and darks just right so I can see more of it for the way I do things and this is my stencil um, this is basically just a felt material from Hobby Lobby. It comes in these sheets for like 70 cents a piece. There's two different kinds. One is really flimsy. You want this one. This one's a little sturdier material. You might be able to find these online. I'm not sure, but Hobby Lobby carries them. They're awesome. That's where I've always gotten them from. And to transfer the image to here, this is, this is my process. If I'm doing something more on the realistic side and I want to save myself a whole lot of time from having to draw it out freehand, I simply throw my reference photo on a light pad, which I'll share a link to that below too. Trace it just on some regular tracing paper like so. And I have a nice printer up there that can blow this up. So I blew this up to a bigger size on 11 by 17 sheet of paper. Then I took the 11 by 17 sheet of paper, which is here. I traced over it once again with a Sharpie to get the lines really bold so that I could then put this on the light pad with this underneath it and so that I could see my lines through this felt material. Then I just simply took a regular ink pen, 
and traced it once again onto this. Then, this is what I use to cut the stencil out. This is simply a wood burner. You can probably buy these at Walmart or Hobby Lobby, either one. And it's nothing fancy, just a really simple one. Just make sure you find one that has different tips because this is the tip I use. It's real thin and pointy and it works really well. You just have to let it heat up for a little bit and then you just go through and trace over all the lines. I hope you can see that good. But it once it heats up, it burns right through this material. Perfect. And you just have to be careful. You just have to be careful not to completely cut out a section. <clears throat> just kind of trace along and leave some of the material there, like on a long line. Just leave little gaps in it so that it doesn't break the stencil completely out. You'll see what I'm saying. If you don't do that, pretty much the stencil will just fall through. It won't stay as one piece. So this comes in really handy. Just capture all your main lines and details. Make sure you get however much information in the stencil you need to do the detail you need to do or want to do. So that's, that's enough information on the stencil for me. That's what I'm gonna work with. And that's basically it. These work really well. I don't know how much they are. They're not very expensive though. If I can find one, I'll put a link below so you can find those. And that's pretty much it. And I have my airbrush loaded up with some medium gray. I think it's transparent medium gray. And I'm simply going to get my stencil in place and lightly spray through the stencil to leave a light gray outline on the shirt. So that then all I have to do is pretty much render the painting. Easy enough, right? All right, so let's get to that. All right, I got all the gray sprayed through the stencil. And as you can see, when, if, you're, if you're using the stencil for the first time, it's real easy to tell if you miss a spot because there's not paint on there, obviously. So let me grab the camera, bring it a little bit closer so you can see what it looks like when I pull the stencil back and you'll be able to get a good look at the outline of the stencil. All right, so that's the stencil process. That's how I transfer an image to the shirt. Sometimes, if, if I'm not gonna freehand it, um, especially if I was gonna be doing this on multiple shirts, I would definitely stencil it and then just use the same stencil. Go ahead and get them stenciled on all the shirts at, right at first. 
and then just render one and then at that point you kind of have it figured out how to go through the whole process and get it all rendered then just throw your other shirt on the board knock it out and then just heat press them all at the end together if you have a big order um, but yeah let's get started I'll show you what colors I'm gonna use on this one and if I have any pointers along the way I'll let you know and before I forget I've got some cool shirts in that I designed for the channel so anybody that wants to support the channel you want a cool t-shirt follow the link below in the description it's workhardneversettle.com that's one of my online stores I have these on there and a lot of other cool stuff so check that out you might find something you like something you can buy for a gift for somebody else or something like that so check that out and I'm gonna get my paint together all right so I got my colors figured out as always pretty much I'll be using opaque white and transparent medium gray and opaque black those three are probably the ones I use the most and for the puppy dog for the ear I'll be in the eyes and maybe some of the nose I'll be using transparent dark brown and transparent light brown and probably some sand transparent sand um I've, i may just use this as a mixer and as far as this light brown color here it's almost orangey so i mixed up a custom color for that in this little cup here and that was basically a combination of these three a little bit of transparent orange and sand mostly and then I had to darken it up just a little bit so I put some light brown in there and it's it may not be like spot on right now but as I airbrush it on I'll just use the trigger to kind of control the opacity of it and just kind of layer it in there and in some of the spots where the color is even warmer and more orangey i may just kind of do some blending on the shirt with this color and some of the orange sometimes i mix it in the cup sometimes i mix it by layering it on the canvas or shirt and sometimes i do a little bit of both so it just depends so it's kind of experimental on some stuff like this you just have to kind of wing it the main thing is get the colors pretty close and make sure you capture the likeness because if you're doing this for somebody and this is their dog you're doing a portrait of they just love their dog or their dog passed away and they want a shirt or a painting in memory of it you want to make sure you capture the likeness the likeness of the that particular pet and the colors if it's going to be a t-shirt it's going to be hard to get the colors perfect sometimes but get it as close as possible you can't spend you know 10 or 20 hours on a painting on a t-shirt most of the time and make it worth your time because you're not going to be able to charge that much for a shirt on a canvas if somebody's paying you really good money and you have and it's if you can justify spending enough time on it to get it perfect and 100% realistic, good. Make sure you're getting paid for that because that's a lot of time. On a t-shirt, you just have to develop your own strategy to getting it as close as possible but in a simple, quicker way so that you can make enough to justify spending the time on the shirt. If a shirt takes you an hour, you want to definitely make sure you're making enough to cover your materials and get paid more for that hour way more for that hour than you would at a regular job because I mean this stuff takes a lot of practice a lot of skill you have to get paid for the time you put in so you can't airbrush a detailed difficult t-shirt 
spend an hour on it and make less than minimum wage on it. So figure out what you value your time, how you value your time, like what an hour is worth to you, two hours, three hours, whatever. Figure out how, how much you spend on your materials. And the more you practice this stuff, the faster and easier you can bust it out. You'll develop your own little style and your way of doing a pet and you'll see my style i kind of i do somewhat realistic but mixed with a little bit of cartooniness i guess especially on this because i'll throw a, a black outline around it when i do a pet portrait i like to make them pop make them really bold but also be kind of realistic so let me get started start throwing down maybe some light browns or light grays or something i don't know i just wing it so, let's get to it.
All right, so you can see the progress so far. So far it's looking pretty cool. I'm not getting too carried away with details and making it look super realistic. Cause like I said, it's a t-shirt. When you're doing t-shirts for people, you need to keep the time to a minimum so that you can maximize your profits on it and do more in a day or you know whatever you're doing. But this looks pretty cool, even without putting tons of detail in it. I'm keeping it pretty simple. I still have more to go. I still have to do some white highlights, blend some white in there in a few spots. And I'm gonna do a background. And I chose to do blue. Now, if you're doing it for a customer, they may have a favorite color or something you have to do. But if you have the chance to use your creative freedom and all that stuff, just think about color theory. Like, like I said earlier, I mixed a tad bit of orange in with that brown to kind of get as close to that color in the reference photo as I could. Mine's not quite as bright. I might, I might brighten it up a little bit now that I look at it a little bit closer. It's, it does need to be a little bit lighter and brighter, but, but anyways, since that looks kind of orangey looking and I, I mixed a little bit more orange in it anyway, I'm going to do a blue because when I do stuff like this, especially at this angle, this is a really good reference photo, a cool angle with the dog looking up. And I put this bold black outline on there. So it already looks like it's kind of popping out at you. So if you know your color theory, blue and orange are complementary. So, and cool colors help warm colors push more towards the viewer and all that stuff. So I'm gonna do a little blue fade around here, make this pop out even more. And then I'm gonna blend the white in there, put the highlights in there. That'll really make it pop, especially on the nose and the eyes it's going to really stand out and be a cool shirt so just wanted to go over that with you um you can find this same image on google if you just google puppy portraits or something like that so i mean it's not a bad idea to just print out that same photo go through the stencil making process like i showed you stop at the dollar store get you a pack of white t-shirts and just practice you know, if you have to do three or four of them to do a decent one, that's fine. I've done hundreds of these things. So it just takes a lot of practice. And so far, this whole video before editing, you know, I'm going at like an hour. So I might have, I might have 30 or 40 minutes of paint time in here. I don't really know. But either way, when this is done, I'll have less than an hour in the t-shirt. So just find a way to where you can get the look you're going for but in a simplified way and as little time as possible because especially if you're going to have a t-shirt booth somewhere customers are impatient sometimes man you got to just bust it out you know take the order send them off to get some food or something or they bust a lap in the mall or wherever you are when they get back, they want their shirt. They don't want people waiting around all day. So you have to get to where you're pretty quick with it. Or something I do sometimes when I airbrush at the bike rally I work at in the summertime, if somebody requests uh, something like this and I don't have the time usually to bust out something like this there, I have business cards on the spot with my Facebook information, email or whatever and I just tell them to message me through there and I'll ask for a deposit through PayPal or something and take the order, get it done, ship it to them. So with social media and all that nowadays, you can easily take orders on there or set up an Etsy store or something and easily, you know, do all kinds of business for all kinds of do all kinds of work for all kinds of people around the world the way things are now so take advantage of that um, advertise your work set up a nice website or something or a nice Etsy store and put some of your better work on there take some orders and bust some stuff out and make some money um, and once again if you have any questions feel free to comment below 
And if you have anything you want to ask about process or, I don't know, I'm probably leaving some stuff out. I'm still getting, you know, trying to get better at the whole YouTube thing. But feel free to ask some questions. I'll try to help you out the best I can. And I'm going to get back to painting, do the blue for the background to make it pop and some white highlights and once again if you would like one of these cool shirts that's backwards because the phone's flipped around but if you would like one of these shirts check out the link below workhardneversettle.com hook yourself up with some new gear and if if you're looking for an opportunity to make some extra cash that online store has an affiliate program so you can simply get an affiliate link once you sign up, share, download the images of the product, share them on your social medias, and share your personal affiliate link, and you can make 10% or more of every sale that you generate. So just throwing that out there, kind of promoting my workhardneverseller.com, and trying to give you an opportunity to make some extra cash too, buy you some new airbrush gear or whatever. So keep that in mind and I'm going to get back to it. That wraps up this t-shirt um, just in case you're new to airbrushing t-shirts and you haven't watched my earlier videos that shows the whole heat press process I'm gonna go over that um, just so you know because when you airbrush a t-shirt I use this uh, I use the Createx paint and I'm sure the other brands of paint also are the same. You must heat press it and get it to a certain temperature so that it heat sets and it cures the paint in the fabric so that when you wash it, it won't fade as much. So it holds up 
uh, for a whole lot longer. So you definitely want to do that. Um, I'll show you what heat press I use and we'll get that done. So stay tuned. All right, so for those of you who are still fairly new to airbrushing t-shirts, uh, once again, you must do the heat press process to fully cure the paint within the fabric and make it to where it doesn't fade when it's washed. Um, this heat press that I use, this is like the second or third one I've had since I've been airbrushing. Maybe the third, I'm not sure, but I've been getting the same one every time. I get a few years out of them and then it may burn out, so I order a new one. I'm pretty sure it's less than 200 bucks, maybe 150 or so. Um, this one's a 15 inch. I recommend getting one that's a lot bigger if you're going to be airbrushing all the time, if that's going to be your full time gig. No more than I do it, this one works fine. I've kind of slowed down on the airbrushing stuff. I do more tattoos and other stuff most of the time. So like on a bigger shirt like this with a bigger design, you're gonna have to press it and then rearrange the shirt, reposition the shirt, and then press it, press it again to get the whole painting. And with a bigger one, you could probably just position it on there, press it, be one and done, one press. Um, and so once you get your heat press, you're gonna need some Teflon. Usually the heat press will come with a couple of sheets and you can order more online, just Google it. Just It's just Teflon sheets, that's all it is. And you'll wanna put one under it. And I do that just in case that rubber pad gets dirty. I like to put Teflon on the bottom and top just to be safe. So I slide it over, just make sure it's covering the whole shirt. If, if this doesn't cover the whole shirt and some of it shows, Sometimes with this much heat, the shirt can burn and turn brown or yellow. So be careful. I set mine up for 350 degrees and I press it for 20 to 30 seconds. I'll usually press it for 20 seconds, lift it up, kind of feel the fabric. And if the fabric's already like super hot, I may leave it alone or I may let up for a minute and then press it again, maybe do like, 15 or 20 seconds more after it cools for a second. I just like to make sure, make it 100% sure that it's set in there good. All right, so here's the first press. You might have to adjust this to make sure it clamps down good and tight. And some people choose to leave it on the shirt boards when they press it. Now, if, if I had a bigger heat press, and wanted to press every shirt in one press and be done, you know, I'd probably leave it on the boards. But for what I do, I take it off the board, and that way I can move it around a little easier. Sometimes the top of the board jams up in there and limits how much I can move it around. So this is what I have to do for my setup. I recommend, if you're doing it full time, leave it on the board and use a bigger heat press, but it's up to you. All right, so that was the first press. Now, like I said, I have to rearrange to get the bottom of the design. So just be careful, make sure everything around your heat press is clean, especially with these white t-shirts. You don't want to give your customer a dirty shirt. All right. Now, one more press. While we're waiting, once again, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, stay up to date, help the algorithms. It really helps me out. Um, I have a couple hundred subscribers already. Thanks for that. Um, just keep hitting the thumbs up that way more and more people see it I get more subscribers and 
I can share this stuff with more and more people. And once again, if you have any questions, just feel free to comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Always be careful getting your shirt off of there. This stuff gets really hot. There you can see the bottom Teflon sheet. So it's good and hot, pressed in there. So now it won't fade. Pretty cool. All right, once again, thanks for tuning in to my channel and checking out my new video. Please subscribe, please hit the like button, share the video, um, let it reach more and more people who are trying to learn how to paint. I learned how to paint and how to do a lot of other things from watching YouTube when I was younger. And now I'm just kind of giving back, doing the same thing, teaching what I've learned. And hopefully you'll do the same if you're just starting out years down the road you get really good you know start your channel or something and share what you learn if you have any questions comment below I'll get back to you as soon as possible if you want uh, some of my shirts check out workhardneversettle.com if you want to become an affiliate and earn extra money sign up on there it's a really cool deal a good way to make you know 100 extra bucks or a few hundred extra bucks a month depending on how good you are at selling things online and how big of a following you have. It's really cool. I appreciate it if you check it out. Um, check me out on Facebook, Tattoos by Thomas. Instagram, Thomas Kennedy Art. Um, work Hard Never Settle on Instagram also. Check out all that stuff. Um, print out this image off Google or something similar and just start practicing making your stencils. Go through that process, watch this video over and over, pause it, watch it in slow motion, whatever. Pick it apart and just find your own way to bust out some cool portraits of dogs or anything you want to do. Just, you know, comment below and ask. I'll do a video, try to help you out. Um, that's all I can think of right now. Until next time, just Get your airbrush out and start practicing. That's the only way to get better. So peace out.